Hi, hey everybody. So this is Jonathan Miller, hometown historian. We are going for our next country roads take me home. This is uh, Route 325. We're going from here. I think it's the town of Orwin. We're right before Tower City, and this gate takes you the whole way over to the town of Dolphin. Uh, I'm not sure if this is Dolphin County yet. I believe it is. I think somewhere over Goldmine Mountain there, it does turn into Dolphin County. Uh, that's, uh, I do want to do a video at some point coming down off Goldmine. Cliff and I, we used to, for a couple years in a row, we'd take a trip that my sister and I and my mom and dad used to take uh, up over the mountain to uh, my aunt, or Uncle Art and Aunt Althea's home in Tower City to see my cousins, Teddy and Tiffany. Uh, occasionally we get to see Doug. Uh, as Doug, Doug and Cindy are actually my cousins and then my second cousins would be Teddy and Tiffany, but it was always such an enjoyable trip. And then just seeing all the lights when you came up over the mountain, especially the Christmas lights. And that was back when we had the Christmas lights that would light everything on fire. <laughs> uh, they were so, I can't believe we didn't have a fire when we were kids with, because we get the live trees and you know, after a while they'd start to dry up. And those were the old like 70s lights that were like brutally hot. Uh, and we lived in a log cabin. It's sort of like the old saying that those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks. Well, those that live in log cabins probably shouldn't be lighting fires on their Christmas tree. But uh, it was it was fun. It was a great upbringing. I guess the danger made made us appreciate life all the more. But uh, this is just it's just a beautiful, beautiful route. Uh, I was never aware of this route until. Uh, Cliff and I wound up picking up a pretty substantial paint job, and we also did a, a resealing of the uh, metal roof of that uh, barn as well, which I say we, but it was actually Cliff is the one that did that. Like, I sometimes don't always get, like, he, like I get that he legitimately, he does not like heights, but I, he's got some courage because he was the one that got up on the ladder and did the upper part of the barn and then he's also the one that did the uh, roof, the resealing. Because uh, I just, I have a dread fear of heights. And uh, kudos to Cliff on that because he's the man. Also kudos to him on the idea of doing this road because uh, this is the pathway that we took over and he, I guess when he did his gold mine video he gave me credit for that and for the country roads doing his series where he does uh, America's like the back roads and stuff like that, which I think are really just as beautiful as the highway series that he does as well. And uh, he had talked about doing a video on this road through here, and I thought it was like, it, I wish I had gotten out here a little earlier because now all the leaves have primarily dropped. It would have been absolutely breathtaking. Because it's just the way the trees go over the highway here. It's like one of those fantasy roads that you'd see in like a fantasy novel. Where the pathway goes right through the middle of the woods. Uh, is really, really neat area. Um, you basically, I'm not sure if we passed the last house or not. But once you pass that last house, if we haven't, there's nothing for like miles and miles and miles. Until you get closer to a uh, dolphin and then you sort of come out of it and there's I guess I don't know if it's the Harrisburg Reservoir but it's a reservoir for something something that has the water for a major major city which I would think is probably Harrisburg but uh, I can't remember exactly but I always enjoyed we took quite a few trips back through here to go over and do that job because I think it took us three or four days uh, it was it was an impressive job we did a really actually did a really really good job I was very happy with that the only thing I was nervous about is normally you don't paint vinyl siding but they wanted the vinyl siding painted <coughs> which was uh, on the front part of the barn the upper part and I highly doubt that that paint didn't start peeling and fall off because it's just not really intended to do that I mean, we use the right type of paint, but it just, it is what it is. But it really, really looked nice once we were done. But, uh, 
anyways I'm gonna let you guys enjoy this drive and uh, I will say that we're gonna try a number of different things here with filming styles <coughs> uh, probably on some like country roads take me home do some things that are a little different I have to admit I'm inspired by Jay of JP videos because I just think the way that he films his cinematography is just phenomenal like his varying styles and how he sort of puts it all together it just makes for a really really pleasant experience and uh, he did a Jim Thorpe video so I want to try to do something like that with Anvil how you get like different varying perspectives it's sort of like with my my photography I do it from different angles well I want to try to there's a nice Christmas display there big frosty the snowman uh, but I want to try to do that with my filming as well because I think it'd be something that would be pretty cool and enjoyable experience I'm thinking about doing Anvil uh, friends of old Anvil just actually put up Cliff's video which apparently the white guy thought we were absolute garbage but everybody else was really happy about it but uh, it was sort of funny because he said the production was awful but it was like geez man and then stop watching <laughs> but uh it is sort of funny how certain people like they get morally offended but i believe this is where like the last house is and then it is nothing but nature for a long ways here but it is still like a really pretty day here on saturday pretty cold i don't handle the cold like i used to but uh uh, really looking been looking forward to doing this video and just got up this morning and decided you know what I hadn't been feeling that great the last couple days and I was like I want to go do this finally I mean it's like I said it's a, a couple days maybe a week late you have some leaves some foliage here yet uh, but not like it would have been say a couple weeks back we had five days of frost in a row and that sort of did it for the trees but so anyways um, you see a lot of vehicles along here because it is the beginning of hunting season I'm not sure if it's like early deer season because I really don't follow that anymore uh, it wouldn't be bear season because bear season usually is like a Monday Tuesday Wednesday and I don't think you'd see that many hunters out because uh, I did do a haunted video out in uh, Stony Valley uh, that Cliff had inspired me for and I should have brought along an orange coat so I sort of made it a little shorter than I normally would have not that I think they they would shoot me being a big red man but uh probably a good idea not to posy about or mosey about in the woods why not get myself shot so I will shut up and uh, just like the one person asked me please please less talky please we'll let you enjoy the the view here uh as we drive here along uh, Route 345, I believe it is. I probably have that wrong. It's probably like 235, but my brain doesn't work that great anymore. I am getting older. So, finally, I will shut up. Enjoy, everybody. sort of cool with a lot of these different roads you have the mountain ranges on the left uh, you can maybe see that a little bit to the left and then to the right you can see that one a lot easier because the trees aren't quite as thick on that side but it's sort of neat going going through here uh, a lot of these roads I think are really really neat it you know it's 325 
I don't know what I said earlier. It might, I might have got that right, but Route 325. Uh, but it does go from Tower City region over to Dolphin. It's definitely a cool drive to take. Uh, I bet it's especially pretty pretty, really pretty through here. We're pretty pretty, and there's that dam. You can see the water over there. It's really, really long. It just keeps on going and going and going. That's why there was a sign earlier that said restricted area. It's, you know, they let you know, like, if you have any kind of weird oil spills or anything like that, you know, because it's a reservoir and it's drinking water, it, you don't want to mess around with anything like that. You got to contact specific authorities right away to make sure that doesn't get in the way into the uh, water supply. But, uh, I mean, they have all kinds of filtration systems, but still, it's, uh, it's a danger. It's the same thing up there. We did the Seagrass Dam. Uh, they have the same thing there. They really don't want you swimming in there or doing anything like that, like messing with the water. Which, it's weird because if you go up further, it's sort of nasty once you get up into, like, the Jeff Swamp area. Because of the coal runoffs and stuff like that, it's like some of the places the water is sort of orange. So it's like, yeah, glad I'm not drinking that water. So, uh, like I said, they have filtration systems to clean all that up, I guess. But, you know, it, it, it has gotten cleaner over time because I remember with going up through Ravine, uh, the Swatera used to be really, really gross up in that area because it was right off the coal mines. But actually, over time, it seems to really cleaned up quite well. Whether that's something that may have made that they've done something to sort of keep that runoff from coming through, or if it's just the earth naturally healing and cleaning itself, I really don't know. I would lean towards the earth naturally sort of diluting things and cleaning things up. Because even, excuse me, even there's another nice view of the lake there. Uh, when we come through here too, there is, it has a name, uh, but I can't get up near the dam. Uh, that's all restricted. You're not allowed near. They're a lot stricter here than they are over at Seagrass because being in it's for a major, major city, Harrisburg, uh, they definitely, they really, really watch that. Uh, but yeah, it is... Uh, even up in Jeff's Swamp, that has uh, really, really cleaned up quite a bit. Because I remember when I was a kid, that used to, it was like so ridiculously orange and gross. It was like, ugh. Uh, but, uh, and even like, like they'd have, it was really cool seeing the creek that came through there because the creek itself would, uh, it had a lot of moss over the rocks and it's one of those cool mountain streams that you see in photos but it everything had sort of this orangish hue to it and it was just it was from the coal runoff but uh yeah pretty cool now oh, there's a good shot of the dam it really is so pretty with the sun reflecting off the water i don't know it makes you really really appreciate this i always enjoyed it when we went through here but seeing it today you even appreciate it more I may wind up pulling over because I got some there's one thing about on this road you have people that come through here because basically there's no cops and they come through here at a million miles an hour and they'll run you down and you'll probably see this person will probably just whip around me like I'm I'm going the speed limit and they they just came out of nowhere here they are. You can pass me, pal. It's one thing I never understood. Like, you have know, people run up on you as quickly as they can, and then all of a sudden they won't pass you. Maybe he sees that I have a camera up or something like that. It's, I don't know. Just slow down. Enjoy the ride. I definitely, the older I've gotten, you know, I used to be more spasmatic about with my driving and wanting to get go, go, go. And, and then I think you reach a point where you're like, 
you're not interested in that anymore. You just sort of want to take your time. I drive like a grandma now, and uh, thankfully there they went. But uh, I just want to relax and appreciate life. And after this year and everything too, it was just sort of you go through certain experiences and it makes you respect and appreciate life all the more. And I'll say once again, I know I get sappy about it, but I can't say how much I appreciate you guys as my viewers and my audience. Uh, you've made this a phenomenal experience. And, you know, a lot of kudos go to Cliff as well. Thankfully, I was able to learn a lot off of him, see things off of, wow, that was a porcupine. Glad I didn't run that over. It was dead, but still, you don't want to hit something like that. You get the quills in your tire. Those things are pretty potent. It's Dehart Dam is what it's called. Couldn't remember what that was called, but Dehart Dam. But it's, you can look on like, I guess like the Google Maps or whatever from overhead, the satellite maps, you can see how huge it is. Like it is freaking massive. But uh, back to the point, my sappy point. Uh, you really do, you go through something like that where it, it's life altering and you know, I honestly, from when I lost my job at Hershey, I had a pretty crappy 10 years and a lot to be thankful for, but you just really, you feel like you're going backwards in life and you work so hard and then to lose a lot of what you had and what you had built up, it's extraordinarily frustrating. Uh, you sort of get betrayed and treated pretty poorly by people and, and messed with and you lose your faith in humanity. I was always sort of like through high school, I was an optimist and sort of class clown. And I just sort of lost that uh, for a long time. You know, it is sort of like, you have a view of what life is and then you sort of get smacked right in the face with the reality of it. And it changes your perspective a lot on life. And then you go through an event like this, which could be what breaks you, but instead it actually builds you back up. And I honestly, when we had the whole thing, what we were doing to GoFundMe and that type of stuff, like the amount of people that gave, but it was, I think just as much what means as much as seeing the kind words, you know, when Cliff talked about the video and it's like that and how awesome you guys were, I will never, ever forget that. Like I never will. It, it just, it changes you. and It makes you believe in humanity again. Like there are truly extraordinary and great people out there yet and you know it, it makes you believe in the betterment and the better angels of, of humanity and I thank you for that and that I can go out and do stuff like this it, it's it really is a blast it makes you appreciate life and nature and people and, and everything in general and it's I think if you can have a positive outlook I have one of my friends Ed he always has such a positive outlook and he puts a thing up every single day on Facebook like hap, hap, happy Tuesday or whatever and just it's one of those things that sort of picks you up and is like yeah I can have a positive attitude about the day even if I'm down even if it's a bad day if it's one of those days like I say I'll have you have as many good days as you have bad days sometimes more bad days with just what you got to face health wise you can always look at it in a positive manner and always approach life in a way that I'm going to succeed and it's going to be a good day, not a bad day. Uh, I'm not going to let this ruin my perspective on how things can be. And uh, it's really, really important to help you get through stuff like this. So once again, thank you. Uh, you guys do mean the world to me. I'm really, really fortunate in that regard. Uh, YouTube channels don't normally build like this. And it's just a lot of different uh, things that have made that possible from Cliff, from the Wandering Woodsman crowd, from his channel, uh, to just seeing how to do this uh, and getting you know, quite a bit of instruction and help from Cliff and, and from others to be able to uh, approach this in a completely different manner than, you know, you sort of, when you go into these things, you approach it with you have a general idea of how it works, but you really don't. And you just sort of have to find your niche and what works for you, what works for the channel, what works for your audience, and sort of be pretty aware and cognizant of what 
what does work in that regard and then, you know, throttle forward and, and make it happen. But uh, uh, it does definitely, it helps when you have, you know, viewers like you guys. It makes the trip really, really enjoyable and far easier. Because uh, otherwise, it's, you know, I've seen what Cliff has gone through uh, from the beginning and he really struggled and he had to work hard. And the sad thing is, is like the people that should have really, really been supporting him, there were a lot of people that just didn't get it. And it, it was early on before the idea of being a content creator with like YouTube or something of that nature was a little bit better understood. Uh, so I will give them that credit, but you can still be supportive. Like it's, it really does amaze me sometimes. Like a friend starts a small business or some kind of venture and like, you know, people just will reject the idea. And it's like, you know what? One of the greatest investments you can make is in your friends and the people that you love and care about. Even if it's somewhat of a crazy idea, give them some support. And you know, that support can make all the difference in the world of whether they succeed or not. And, and you know what, a major part of life, it is failure. Uh, Jim, uh, who I work with, we always joke about that we're failures. I don't think either one of us is failures, I really don't. You know, it's, yeah, you look back in life, you know, it, it's a 2020 vision, you're like, well, if I had done this or I'd done that, I'd be in a different place and I have quite a number of those moments where I should have done, but then I wouldn't be where I'm at now and I wouldn't have had the life experiences that have made me into who I am. And I'm thankful for that. And you joke about it, but you know, failure is, you know, we learn much more from failure than we do from our successes. And we come to appreciate what we have more and what we've been able to accomplish because of our failures. Because we know what it's like to fall down. And hopefully then we know what it's like to get back up and try, try again. Because you can't let life defeat you. You can't let circumstance defeat you or nasty people or any of that. You just got to keep on going. And, you know, it's, I'm very, very fortunate and very, very thankful in, in life and how things have worked out for me. And it could have been very, very different. And uh, But I'm where I'm at. I'm thankful I'm where I'm at. Uh, it's just continual facing the journey and, and making the best of it and this has been another journey that's been a lot of fun and uh, we're probably coming up on Dolphin not that far off because we got past the first couple habitations uh, like I said I wish I had gotten this maybe say a week earlier maybe two weeks earlier when there was still foliage because it's just such a prettier because you get the full effect of the trees just fully hanging over and sort of enveloping the road and you don't get that quite as much with this but you were able to see the dam a little bit better than you would have if the foliage had been fully up but uh sorry for talking so much <laughs> it is like i'm gonna shut up now and then it doesn't happen i can't help it i i have that gene from my dad and my mom and it's funny because my mom's I don't want to say a shy person, but it's sort of like I'm sort of the same way that once I get to know people and I get comfortable, I don't shut my pie hole. <laughs> uh, I guess it's an endearing quality possibly, but uh, I'm also a storyteller and I like to, like to talk. I like to talk about life experiences and all that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Uh, we are coming to the end here. At some point, how long it is exactly, I really can't remember because I haven't taken this for quite a while. But this is state game lands, I think, for the most part, except for like the Dehart Dam. That would be, I guess, Harrisburg property if that is the Harrisburg Reservoir, but not really certain exactly. Uh, but at some point, I believe Cliff is going to try to do a video of this as well because it really is, it's a neat. It's a really neat, neat road to go on. It, you know, it's a lot of wilderness. Just a really nice road. It's a pleasant drive. It's one of those that would be a fun Sunday drive. But uh, got a little bit of woods here yet, and then we'll come up on uh, on the town of Dolphin. Gotta switch hands just quick. My weak little arms 
are feeble and cannot attempt to hold it for more than a couple minutes. That is one thing, once I start using a new camera, it's it's heavier than this, but the, the, blah, 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 the ability to grip it is a lot easier because it actually has like a handle, whereas this, you're sort of, you know, it's not, like the phones aren't that big, and the way you have to hold it is sort of uncomfortable. So, that will be nice. I'll probably use the camera for that. I'll see how that works, do like some short test runs, and see what happens in that regard. We'll go from there. But I am hoping here shortly to start using that uh, that new camera fully. I just gotta get the SD card in and do a couple other things, do my test footages, and make sure the audio is working correctly, and then go from there. Because I did have like a, no, that one Pennsylvania uh, monument at Gettysburg was pretty brutal, and it's unfortunately you don't know how bad the wind is and how much it's blocking the sound out until you actually watch the video and by then it's too late unfortunately uh, to go back and refilm but it is a beautiful monument and it was a lot of fun in Gettysburg uh, the last video got dropped yesterday for that Gettysburg series but Cliff and I are planning on going back possibly doing a Gettysburg monument series I think it would be pretty cool because you sort of get a different view of things if you will um, because a lot of those small monuments that nobody really is sort of off the beaten path, it shows where certain regiments were from different states, like say the, the 4th Connecticut Volunteer Artillery was at this location on the battlefield. And it'd be cool because there is so much research that's already been done. You can probably find out exactly where that Connecticut regiment or unit was from. Uh, when they enlisted and all that kind of stuff so it just it'd be cool to be able to go I think a little more in depth instead of just saying this was the 4th Connecticut Regiment but these are who they were and it sort of personalizes it to a greater degree and I think that's important I always thought that was a pretty creek there I think they have like a trout fishery or something along here as well but uh, we are definitely towards the very very end of this now I'm recognizing that. I think the trout fishery is here on the left, and then the road is uh, right here. I believe that's what it is. And it's something like that, it's something to do with fishies. But uh, the road comes up here shortly, and then we'll find a place to turn around and head back home. I might try to get a couple other videos done, but I don't know. It's chilly. Still a little tired, my back's still a little funky. Keep on pinching a nerve in the middle of my back. Uh, makes it not the most enjoyable experience to walk around, but, uh, and I'm hungry. I haven't really eaten anything yet today, but, uh, anywho. So we come up on this and stop sign, and we will be stopping here shortly. And I will say once again, thanks for coming along. I do hope you enjoy my rambling and my jibber-jabbering. And I hope that you uh, enjoy us getting up to our adventures and whatnot. I haven't done one of these for a little bit. I think Monroe Valley was the last one. And I do want to start going back out and doing some a couple more churches and things like that. Sort of intersperse them in between the uh, videos for the new camera go from there I think that's actually the trout hatchery something like that this road keeps on going on and on I keep on saying goodbye and it's like nope we're not gonna end I keep on forgetting how long this actually is I knew it was probably a good half hour uh, drive yep here we are so with that I will say goodbye there is the creek I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I certainly did. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to go south here on 225 and turn around. So with that, I will say thank you once again. Actually, we're going to go right. I'll let this guy go by so I don't die. And with that, I will say my final uh, goodbye. And thank you for coming along. And we will see you all. 
about town.